Let's speak for a few minutes about the other side of the medal, the side of squamous cell carcinoma. And why not starting with actinic keratosis, which is by definition the earliest uh, type of squamous cell carcinoma. Of course, we, we like to call them actinic keratosis because we know, even though we know that these are, this is a kind of carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma in situ, but just a small, very small proportion of actinic keratosis are going to become invasive squamous cell carcinoma. So, actinic keratosis, we, we are today able to identify them much, much easier also by the use of dermoscopy because of this list of criteria uh, the most obvious uh, morphology in dermoscopy of actinic keratosis is the presence of this strawberry pattern typified by this reticular um, red pseudo network, red pseudo network with uh, reticular vessels and white white follicles in the center. Uh, here another example of this strawberry pattern with uh, this red pseudo network and here you see also an additional feature which is very nicely seen uh, through the use of polarized light dermatoscopes and this is the presence of rosettes. What, what is a rosette? A rosette is the presence of one to three, four dots within the follicle, eh? white dots within the follicle and here you can see clearly what, I look, what I'm speaking about. Eh? And this is very specific, again, for uh, actinic keratosis. If there is pigment, then if we are dealing with a pigmented actinic keratosis, then the game is becoming much more challenging. Eh? The diagnosis can be much more challenging because this lesion clinically is looking like a melanoma. Eh? Or sometimes they are looking like a, uh, seborrheic keratosis or whatever. So, but even in the in this case of uh, pigmented actinic keratosis, nowadays we are able to identify them much better with mu with much more confidence. Why? Because we know what to look for. Again, the white follicles, as you can see here. Eh? Again, the erythema that it's very uh, very frequent also in pigmented actinic keratosis. But especially we see these kind of pigmented scales. Eh? This kind kind of uh, uh, very superficial, very sharply demarcated reticulation, this is uh, just pigmented uh, uh, scales. Eh? And as you, as you can see here, you can identify uh, that this is a very superficial pigmentation because of the sharp demarcation of these lines. Eh? And here, an example of a melanoma in which you don't see this kind of white follicles, you don't see this kind of superficial, uh, sharply demarcated pigmented lines, but you see this kind of gray color, rhomboidal structures, annular granular pattern. So immediately you can realize that the morphology of melanoma is completely different. A very unique type of carcinoma in situ is the so-called Bowen's disease, which is typified dermoscopically by glomerular vessels scales and if pigmented uh, you can see them you can see the pigmentation as peripheral linear dots eh? this is a, a newly discovered dermoscopic criterion here a very good example of a non-pigmented Bowen's disease where you can see clinically uh, a, a scaling plaque and dermoscopically, look how beautiful are these glomerular vessels which are usually uh, packed in a cluster eh? so they are closely packed into clusters eh, within the lesion. And then, of course, you see additional scale crusts. But here you see an example of a pigmented Bowen's disease, which is clearly clinically looking like a melanoma. But if you look at carefully in dermoscopy, apart from this white area, which is really looking like regression of a melanoma, but if you look at the periphery, you see these lines. And if you magnify a little bit, you see that these lines are composed by dots or globules eh, in, in, uh, in a line, as you can see also here. And this is one, uh, uh, the, maybe the only specific clue for the diagnosis of pigmented Bowen's disease. Eh? Here another example where you see uh, it's a, a Bowenoid actinic keratosis with, uh, with this kind of pigmented lines in the periphery. And also here you can see a little bit the criteria. Uh, and now, the last words are going for squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma 
It is definitely uh, an expanding disease. Uh, it's becoming more and more frequent, especially because the population is becoming a more, much more elderly than in the past. Um, uh, morphologically, uh, you see that the criteria are very similar to those we, we talked about concerning actinic keratosis, but instead of white circles, as we can see in actinic keratosis, we see a much more structured, uh, structureless white coloration. Eh? In, in, in SEC, we see white structureless areas. Instead of reticular vessels, we see polymorphous vessels. And instead of scale crust, we see we start to see ulceration in squamous cell carcinoma. And here, a good example of a squamous cell carcinoma appearing on a previous um, scar from a previous burning, um, a burning scar. And here you see what we can uh, we can identify demoscopically white color. And eh? this is the main clue, which is jumping into our eye. And of course, polymorphic vessels and scale crust in the center. Eh? Here, another example of a squamous cell carcinoma, again, a nodule with uh, scales and ulceration clinically. And here you see a combination of white color, but also a, a lot of red color eh? and a lot of polymorphic vessels. So here is the case where um, squamous cell carcinoma is becoming less uh, uh, differentiated. Eh? When you have a squamous cell carcinoma which is well differentiated, then you have a lot of white color. Then when you go to, through poor differentiation, you see less and less white color and much more red color. And here you can see an example of a poorly differentiated a squamous cell carcinoma in which basically white color is not so visible anymore. We see a red tumor with some uh, white circles still uh, in, uh, 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 let's say, a clue for squamous cell carcinoma, but in a case like this, it's extremely difficult to uh, be sure. Eh? The differential diagnosis, like in this other example here, the differential diagnosis should include poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma, but of course also amelanotic melanoma or Merkel cell carcinoma. Eh? And therefore, in these particular cases, the moscopy is not really adding too much. So, this is what I wanted to share with you. Remember that the world, the world of uh, 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 malignant uh, skin diseases uh, is, uh, is huge. Uh, but of course, apart from BCC and squamous cell carcinoma, all the rest of the lesions are very rare. So please concentrate on the most common tumors Basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma are very much more easily to identify today with the use of demoscopy. And with this, I thank you for your attention. Bye-bye.